I'm Dr. Cedric Noel. I'm a certified chiropractic neurologist, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to have a back that feels great all the time. The secret is really in three parts. First, you want to promote a healthy disc. If you have healthy discs in your spine, and you have a very stable spine, and the networks of your brain that also engage those deep muscles that stabilize your spine, if those networks are working well, then you will have a spine that feels really great all the time. Now, for the disc to heal, what I recommend is home decompression. And the reason why is because the discs don't have any blood supply to them. Since there's no blood flow that goes to a disc, they tend to slowly heal. If there's an injury to the disc, it'll take longer to heal. But also to promote uh, and to maintain the health of a disc, you need that constant movement between the bones above uh, and below a disc. And so this process is called imbibition. Imbibition happens when you have healthy movement between above and below a disc. Now, when you decompress the spine, you actually promote this process uh, very effectively. Typically, when you have an injury, what will happen is your, the, the muscles around the spine will tighten up and you'll have less and less movement in that area. So the spinal decompression is great at restoring motion and imbibition and nutrition to the discs. Also, a, a second benefit to decompressing the spine is that when you take the pressure off the joints, you desensitize the pain receptors in and around the discs and in the joints there. Now, there's, there's different ways that you can decompress your spine. My preference is a horizontal decompression system, but you can also use inversion. The only downside to inversion is that it comes with a fairly long list of contraindications. And that list can be found on the inversionbelt.com website. So the best and safest way to decompress your spine is using the stamina uh, inline stretch bench with cervical traction. And we also recommend using the inversion belt as an accessory because that way you can actually decompress your spine directly from the lower back to the neck. And so the reason why this is the best um, recommendation that we can make is that with the stamina stretch bench and the inversion belt, you can decompress your back and your neck at the same time. There's also rolling foam pads on the bench so that allows you to glide more easily. And if you, for some reason, didn't want to stretch your neck and just want to do the lower back only, you can do that too. Another great benefit is that you can decompress on your back or on your stomach. And that simple difference there can make all the difference for some individuals. Some people will decompress laying on their back and they either will not get relief or they may even feel like they feel worse after decompressing. And simply turning to a stomach position, so laying prone, will make all the difference. And that's because the angle of pull is slightly different. One way to know which way you should decompress is very simple. If you do a simple test of bending forward and bending backwards, if you bend forward and you feel more pain, then you should do the decompression on your stomach. If you bend backwards and feel more pain, then you should do the decompression on your back. And if you were to decompress on your back, one addition that you can make that could be really great is a T-bar. So we specifically made a T-bar that is longer so that you can attach the inversion belt to it at a higher angle. This creates a higher angle of pull, and this uh, higher angle of pull will actually facilitate better decompression at every level in, in, your, in your lower back. And so you can get that at inversionbelt.com. We're the only one that make it, and we made it specifically for this purpose. If you were to decompress on your stomach, then you want to use a pillow that'll go under your, your waist, uh, your pelvis. So that way, as you put the inversion belt on, it's more comfortable to lay on your stomach and the buckles don't press against you. But it also creates a better angle uh, of decompression as well. So, and secondly, we could use a neck sofa pillow, which we also provide on inversionbelt.com. And that is a pillow that can just comfortably cradle your face. As you lay face down, you can have a good space uh, for your face to comfortably rest and, and breathe. Now, there is another problem that can occur with decompression. So you may have done all those things and you may still feel like you get some soreness after you decompress. So there's still a few things you can do to minimize the soreness. And you also should understand that um, the soreness doesn't necessarily mean that the decompression is not good for you. 
naturally, we recommend that you consult a, a physician to find out if it's appropriate for you. Uh, however, if, if you need uh, some decompression to promote healing into a disc, it may be a little bit more sensitive, and we want to try to minimize that sensitivity as much as possible. So first, uh, the intervals of decompression could be done uh, in a way that you decompress for a minute and then release the tension for 20 to 30 seconds. And so if you do intervals like that, as opposed to just decompressing and holding the stretch for um, minutes at a time, you want to release the tension after one minute and, and keep it released for 20 to 30 seconds and then again decompress again for another minute. So do intervals like that. The session time should also be shorter. So if you keep your, your uh, decompression session at five minutes or less, you're a lot less likely to have any di discomfort or soreness after doing a decompression. Um, third, the intensity. So if you keep the intensity of the stretch very low, so what you want is, is you want to be able to just feel that there's a, a little bit of a stretch it's comfortable, but you can tell it's stretching, but you keep it light right there. The, the problem is that when you decompress, since those pain receptors are being offloaded, you can stretch it really, really hard, and it's going to feel great. And you won't know that you're doing it too hard until after the session's over when you go to stand up. And so we strongly recommend just a gentle light, light pull, just so that you can just feel like there's a little bit of a stretch and hold it there for a minute, release for 20 to 30 seconds, and do intervals like that. Now, if you have a TENS unit or you get a TENS unit, you can use um, a TENS unit to desensitize the nerve endings or the pain receptors in your back. That works well. You could put an electrode on each side of your spine at the level of the pain. Now, we sell and recommend a, a ZTEC device. It's kind of like a TENS unit, but it's different. It's got different frequencies, and it actually helps to deeply massage some of those deep muscles in your back and also desensitize those pain receptors. It works extremely well. It's very smooth, and it reaches really deep, deep in your spine. It does cost a lot more, but it is simply the best uh, that the market can offer. Now, as a contraindication, you cannot use those electrical devices if you have a pacemaker. Now, another consideration is that if you decompress, you do all those things and you still are having some discomfort, I would strongly recommend that you see a chiropractor. Because if your spine is misaligned, or if you have what we call the subluxation, then that will create more muscle tension around the spine. And when you go to decompress, as long as that vertebra is misaligned, the tension will not go away and it's gonna be uncomfortable. So at the end of your session, just wait three to five minutes before getting up. And that can also make a good difference. Think about it. If you decompress and your spine is in this negative compressive state, and then you, you let go of the tension and you go straight to standing, now you go into compressive, it's nice to have a transition time there and that can really greatly reduce the soreness as well. So now you know how to decompress and feel your best. However, that's not everything. Remember, there's three steps to having a really healthy spine and a spine that feels great all the time. The second step is uh, strengthening your spine. So to strengthen the spine, we want to do something that reaches those deep, small muscles around the spine. Not the big, large muscles that we feel when they tighten up or cramp or the, those big moving mover muscles. We want those deep, stabilizing muscles. And the best way to do that is using the body blade. So obviously, we're a huge fan of the body blade. It's also available on inversionbelt.com. Uh, so the first uh, strategy that we use is to hold the body blade in midline horizontal position for 30 seconds. And then after 30 seconds, you stand on your right leg and continue for another 30 seconds and then your left leg for another 30 seconds. And then you move the body blade in midline vertical position for 30 seconds. Continue for 30 seconds on the right foot and then 30 seconds on the left foot. Then move the body blade in midline overhead horizontal position for 30 seconds. Continue for 30 seconds on the right foot and then 30 seconds on the left foot. Then move the body blade in midline overhead vertical position for 30 seconds and continue for 30 seconds on the right foot and then 30 seconds on the left foot. Now this is in its entirety about a six minute workout 
uh, I would recommend maybe starting with the first half of those exercises, which is three minutes. And if you do that three minute exercise every day, you will be surprised, I think, to see, happily surprised how great it feels in stabilizing those deep muscles. Now, the third point is we have to include the brain in what we do because it is the brain that not only stabilizes and controls the spine, but it also is the brain that moves our body. And so what we like to do is eye head exercises. So first you follow your thumb with your head and eyes together for 10 repetitions on the horizontal and then 10 repetitions on the vertical plane. And next, follow your thumb with your eyes and move your head in the opposite direction for 10 repetitions on the horizontal and then 10 repetitions on the vertical plane. So then move your eyes between your thumbs. If you put your thumbs out on each side of your, of your head, move your eyes between your thumbs for 10 repetitions on the horizontal and then 10 repetitions on the vertical. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, take your thumb and bring it to the nearest clear point that you can see and then put the other one a few inches further back. And you're gonna move your eyes between your thumbs. And as you move your eyes between your thumbs, you wanna hold each position for at least three seconds, but you could easily go to 10 seconds if that's doable for you. And do that 10 times. So lastly, if you don't have a body blade, you can consider doing isometric exercises. So while you sit in a chair, you wanna bend backwards at the waist and against either the back of a chair, and if the chair's against the wall, it's even better, that way your, your shoulders can press back against the wall for three seconds. You keep pushing back and repeat that 10 times. And then you're gonna bend forward at the waist, putting your arms straight out, lock in your elbow so that your arms are uh, locked up on your legs. And as you bend forward, uh, you wanna bend forward for three seconds and repeat that 10 times. And then you're gonna rotate. You're gonna rotate your upper body and this is ideal, again, against the wall. You're gonna rotate your body to the left so that your left arm is pressing against the back of the chair or against the wall for three seconds, and then do that to the right three seconds and repeat that 10 times. And you can perform these uh, one to three sets every day, and you'll be surprised how helpful that is. Now, if you found this video to be helpful, please share it with everyone you know, because at least 80% of the population will have back pain at some point in their lives. And I hope this video was informative and helpful in at least guiding your journey to finding solutions for your back.